The Broadway smash hit Hamilton is getting yet another accolade. Members of the original cast of Hamilton performed the song The Schuyler Sisters at the Kennedy Center Honors earlier this month. The musical has joined a prestigious group of artists recently celebrated for its contributions to American culture. The four co-creators, director Thomas Kale, choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler, music director Alex Lacamoire, and writer, lyricist, and actor Lin-Manuel Miranda all received the famous rainbow ribbon. We spoke with them in Washington about their historic achievement. For my Betsy loves me and is acquainted with all the joys of fondness. What? <laughs> For Lynn Manuel Miranda, a new discovery of a love letter at the Library of Congress can still thrill him about Alexander Hamilton. That's hot, y'all. <laughs> There are awards given uh, in categories. Then there is this award, which is basically being given to you all because you have done something, well, I'll read what it says. Trailblazing creators of a transformative work that defies category. So they created a new category because what you've it's created. It's the best way to win an award. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time ever, a creative team is walking away with a Kennedy Center honor. But the four are no strangers to acclaim. Choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler, director Thomas Kale, and musical director Alex Lacamoire collaborated with Lynn manuel Miranda on In the Heights. Miranda, Blankenbuehler, and Lacamoire each won a Tony Award for the show, and the 27-year-old Kale was nominated for Best Director. All four won Tonys for Hamilton. It's not a singular effort. The Broadway musical is based on minds coming together, problem solving, creating, being inspired. Me, I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me. I'm the damn fool that shot him. Where is this collaboration taking place in its various different times? For the first few years, it was just happening in my head on vacations. And it was like the ghost of Hamilton would be like, hey, write, write a song for King George, which got written on my honeymoon. You'll be back soon, you'll see. You remember you belong to me. And Tommy was like, we should start setting deadlines because if you're gonna average a song a year, this is gonna take us a very long time. Our first deadline was uh, a concert we did at Lincoln Center's, uh, jazz at Lincoln Center. I remember seeing Andy in the audience. Something like this. Going like this. <laughs> and being like, oh, Andy's gonna end up choreographing this. <laughs> and so then, uh, Alex, where does the story go from there? Uh, it usually starts when Lynn emails a demo of the song that he's written. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, how do we get a band to play this? How do we get singers to harmonize in chords to support what the story is, what to support what the melody is? Describe how you would explain the way Washington moves. Well, I mean, stage. like Right Hand Man is a great example because Right Hand Man was always um, supposed to be like Washington stepping out of an oil painting. He's so grand, he's a god to us, and the bullets never hit him. I've literally never heard you describe it that way before, which is amazing. <laughs> It was exactly pulling Washington down off the oil painting. It was, let's not meet Washington standing, crossing the Delaware, somehow not falling off this tiny canoe. <laughs> let's meet him being like, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough troops, and we're losing. How do you not basically get on each other's nerves? Oh, well, I think that we respond to each other's energy in a way that's really positive. Tommy has a way of setting a room where the best idea in the room wins. And, you know, if I bring in a song and I see Andy's already leapt to his feet and Alex is already playing with variations, I'm like, okay, we're pretty far along the course. If I bring in a song and it's quiet, I go, okay, <laughs> swing and a miss. You know, my feeling about it is we all understand instinctively that the stakes can be high and the temperature of the room can be low. 
and that you can make excellent things with harmony. In the greatest city, in the greatest city. This can be proof that it's possible to make something of high quality that didn't uh, result from acrimony or, uh, you know, or raising your voice. If nothing else, that's one of the things that, that I hope that becomes part of the legacy of the show. I, I remember thinking to myself, like, I do not want to ruin this because everything that Lynn has given us is so amazing. We brought you stuff. together because we wanted to tell you something. You ruined it. I see guys Thank you so much. <laughs> but was there ever a moment where you thought, Gee, rap about having states' debts assumed by the federal government, that's not gonna fly. His plan would have the government assume states' debts. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. I remember the first time Lynn brought the demo to me and I heard it. My first reaction was I couldn't tell if it was trying to be tongue in cheek. I was so uh, uh, taken because it was so different. I didn't know what to expect. If you talk, you're gonna get shot. So it wasn't until a year later until I heard my shot. The first black battalion of another shot. And I heard that chant, I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. And I started to see, oh my God, Lynn is dead serious about this. And it really started to fill me with something. I never pictured the Founding Fathers with this kind of energy, with this kind of passion and drive. For Miranda, Hamilton's life and his words seem tailor-made for the stage. What can I do better than withdraw from the scene? Every day proves to me more and more that this American world was not made for me. Mm. And he feels lucky that he got to tell the story. I couldn't believe it hadn't been told in this form. Um, it just, it seemed like someone else would have had this idea already. I'm really grateful that I found the right collaborators to help get it out of my head and get it out of the void. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. Oh, that was so good. I, lo I love how Andy says it is not a singular effort. And I can remember, it's not just the music of Hamilton. It was the core. I can't remember the last time I had seen a musical on Broadway where there weren't elaborate sets, where the main attraction were the people who were performing and singing alone. I mean, it's like nothing I had ever seen before. They deserve this recognition. And in talking to them, you can see them all working and playing off each other, and you could see it in the piece while we're, it's happening right in front of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are this organism that operates as four. Yeah, you can make excellent things with harmony. Yeah. We'd like to think that Lynn manuels wife has forgiven him for thinking of songs during their honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> that was on funny. Her. It paid off. Yeah, and our collaboration, Andy Merlis did a great job producing that yes. and Debbie Chapman editing it. So Beautiful. we are the product of great collaborations mm -hmm. as well. And you can watch the tribute to Hamilton and all of the artists honored by the Kennedy Center on Wednesday, December 26th. It airs at 8, 7 central right here on CBS. <laughs>